Hey everybody, this is Dan from Mechanical Malarkey. Today is going to be another engine teardown video, this time on a Honda R18A1 engine. This was in the 8th generation Honda Civic, other variants were in the 9th generation and in the 1st generation HRV. Personally, I think this is one of the most reliable engines that Honda has sold in the US in the last 20 years. The only problems I ever see are usually because of neglect or in this case, the radiator lost all its coolant and overheated the engine. So this engine in particular is the first engine I actually got to replace myself. I did it earlier this year in January. And the car got towed in because it wouldn't start. So the customer says the car overheated and stalled. I'm out here cranking it, it won't start. Decided to check the oil. Yeah, I'd say that got pretty hot. Needs an engine. And I happened to pull the dipstick. I'm not even sure why, I just did and found that there's no dipstick left, which told me immediately that this engine was overheated and was toast, fully cooked. That was about all the diagnostics I did to determine that it needed a new engine. Later, I just was curious and wanted to see what the plugs looked like. So I went to take out the ignition coils. Cylinders two and three are completely stuck in there. They're probably melted in is my guess. So now to start the teardown. Like I said, these two ignition coils are completely stuck in the head. Fortunately, I can take the cover off and get the head off without removing them. On most dual overhead cam, they'll go right through the cover. But even though I don't have to remove them, I wanna try just to see if I can get them out. So one and four come out just fine. I'm gonna try prying on those, see what happens. Oh, I got it. Well, oh yeah, that is melted. I was lucky to get that one out. Now I'll try this one. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that completely broke in half. So as you can see, cylinder three is actually melted here. And then cylinder two must have melted in so bad that I just broke it. So yeah, definitely saving these and the dipstick and any other melted pieces I find, because that's fun carnage. You can see the rest of the coil is still down there in the tube. Now to pull the valve cover, see if there's anything overheated inside I can see. I need a new one of these. All right, where's a good place to pry? There we go. Well, everything looks pretty normal inside. You know, obviously overheated stuff up here, but should be down there. Now to get the side cover off, first I need to take the pulley off. Got my special Extra heavy socket for that. Keyway fell out. You don't want to lose these if you're wanting to put the engine back together. Now a bunch of 10s and 12s to get the side cover off. All my power tools are moving really slowly because they're cold. Now 
There we go. Very simple single cam timing chain setup. Now, I know the way you're supposed to take these off is by turning the engine backwards so it pushes that back in, putting a pin in there. But I don't care, so I'm just popping it off. Flung an O-ring off that way. Oh, there we go. Won't let go of my socket. There we go. That's in the pan now. Now I should be able to get the chain off easily. There we go. One timing chain. Now I'm going to strip off as much of this stuff off of the head before I take the head off. Curious if any of the injectors are somehow melted in too. This is the VTEC solenoid assembly. It may only be a single cam, but it does have VTEC. Take off this little EGR pipe thing. Say that's it for this side of the head. This little water passage thing here. This is the air box mount. And this front water passage, take that off first. See the coolant temperature sensor sticking down into the coolant. I am going to take the cam out. So I'll just take this cam cover off right now. This side, got to remove all of this, which is water passages and part of the EGR system. And I'm not really worried about there being any coolant in this because it overheated so badly that it probably evaporated anything that was in there. But we'll see if I'm wrong. Thermostat housing. And I know this engine has been sitting for several months, but usually there's still some residual coolant when you take things apart. There's nothing in here. You 
EGR valve. Those nice and things just want to fall right apart when you take the bolts out. This just has a gasket. Yeah, there's actually still a tiny bit of coolant left in here. I was not prepared for that. <laughs> Should have been. Now to get the cam out, first this top girdle plate. This thing stinks, probably from being overheated. Oh, all these springs for the special rocker system just fell down. Oh, those are also the bearing caps, okay. Never taken one of these apart before. Theoretically, it should all come apart now. There we go. This is the whole rocker arm assembly. Right on top of the cam in the middle. It has the special VTEC option. And you can see the cam in here. And it looks like this is the one that just slides right out. Somehow. Oh, I'd have to remove that on the end first. Maybe. Cam sensor. So that's the right way to treat that. Oh, how about that? There's no juice in it. That worked. Now the cam comes right at the back side. So without VTEC this would be a much simpler cam, but instead it's got five lobes per cylinder. I believe the middle lobe is the special VTEC one. Looks like it's in pretty good shape. Doesn't look overheated at all, unlike the last engine I did where there was discoloration on the cam. I was trying to strip this down a little bit more before I take it off.
All right, next step will be taking out the head bolts. It's a lot of dirt. All right, time for the big moment to find out if the cylinders are melted like I'm suspecting. Could have just been a head gasket that blew, but it had probably not much compression. Or it just has melted off spark plugs. Well, the pistons don't look great. They look a little toasted, but I guess take off this gasket, see if there's anything that it's hiding. So before I do that, can I get this out? Here's the rest of the dipstick. So it didn't fully melt, but it did melt it off in that spot. Well, cylinders are not melted. A little disappointed. Let's try turning the engine, see if I see anything different. Cylinder walls actually look just fine. That's interesting. But they're all toasty. There's a lot of, I don't know if it's the coating of the piston coming off or just carbon buildup. But let's take a look at the underside of the head because that might hold the key to why this engine would not run. All right, here's the underside of the head. And it really doesn't look bad to me at all. This is cylinder two and three. And nothing looks bad around the edges, really. The valves look okay to me. The spark plugs look okay too, so I don't know, maybe something's, maybe a valve just isn't sealing right and I can't see it by my eye. Yeah, so far the only thing I found bad on this engine was the ignition coil that was melted and the one that I broke off. So I don't know why this engine wouldn't run. That is strange. Well, I may not have found catastrophic engine damage like I was hoping, but I do kind of want to still take apart the rest of the engine just because. So that's what the rest of this video will be. All right, I'm gonna pull this water pump, then flip it and take the pan off.
looks like there is still a little in there. So I'll do the smart thing and move this over. gonna make a mess when I turn it over because I can't catch all the fluids. I guess all the remaining coolant is right there. All right, oil pan removal. I'm going to have to take it off this and have it just on three mounts I think but it's not that big of an engine Oil pickup tube. Now the windage tray. Oh yeah, there's the uh, tensioner guide bolt I dropped earlier. All right, obviously I don't have to take any of this apart, but I want to take it apart, so I will. I'm going to pop these pistons out. All right, I do want to take out the crank just for experience of taking apart an engine this far, but I don't think you guys need to see that, so I will wrap this video up. Well, there wasn't the damage that I was hoping to find when I took apart this engine, but taking apart an engine is always fun anyway. I have one more engine that I want to take apart. Hopefully that one has some damage because I know it sucked up some water, but with how this didn't have any melting when I thought it would, who knows. If you like the video, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel. 
Follow me on social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and read the blog at mechanicalmalarkey.com. Thanks for watching. What?